What is up my peep holes? This is your guy Cly, and welcome back to that thrifting series. Apparently by not shooing the cat off the mat last time, he has decided that he is entitled to be sitting in frame in my videos from now on. He actually stayed away right up until I started doing my first introduction. And now he is splayed, purring, and looks like he's actually about to slide off the table, so here's hoping that doesn't happen. And at least he's not as disruptive as the work crew that has been here all week now. The same people that had the chainsaws in my last video. Today I'm dealing with wood chippers. Honestly, there's no better time for me to record, sadly, because I made the huge mistake of fixing my sleep schedule so I'm no longer awake in the middle of the night. Yeah, that's fun. Anyway, today's video, as you can see, is all about board games, mainly because the floodgates are open once again. I am almost back to my old numbers from a few years ago where I was finding eight board games a week, up to six, so I'm not doing too poorly. And kind of fits because I'm sticking to six items per thrift haul just to make sure I can keep the videos underneath the 20 minute mark. I mean, if I showed you all the ones from last week, I'd be here for about half an hour to an hour. It's just been that good. Anyway, our first game of the evening is Siege. Now, this is one that really doesn't have that many reviews on Board Game Geek. It is only a 5.4 with 39 reviews. Not really that impressive, so why did I pay $2 for it? Well, a few things that I've told you about board game thrifting in the past is it has the right texture, it is a nice matte finish with a little bit of, I don't know how best to describe it, a little bit of a raised texture to it. Let me, let me bring this up to my mic. If you can rub your finger across it and hear that noise, let me just do it again. I think it's being picked up by the mic. I'm seeing small bumps, but that doesn't mean anything. Could be the refrigerator running in the background because I can't escape that either. Anyway, if you hear any kind of nice noise, notice a nice matte texture, that's a game worth looking up and maybe even buying. Another reason I bought it is because it's from AEG. This is one of the companies that I do collect. And it's an interesting little deduction game where you have a king, you're trying to figure out your opponent's moves, making sure your king doesn't get eliminated too early so that you can actually take the throne. Best part, let me just shake it, there we go. Beyond the rule book, a completely unopened pack. This happens to me way more than it should and I'm not gonna complain about it. So that's my first and lowest rated game of the evening. I'm actually sticking these sort of in board game geek score order, so on to the next game. I completely forgot to mention the price of Siege in the last segment. It's originally a $25 game. I got it for two. Not bad. This is actually probably going to be the most recently released game today. This is Evolution the Beginning, and it is a 7.0 on Board Game Geek out of 523 reviews. And though it is no longer unpunched, when I got it, it was completely unpunched, all of the cards still in shrink, all the chits in the sheet, and I played it. It's actually a pretty good game. Let's go ahead and open her up. Now, this is actually the second time I've seen it at Goodwill, actually. The first time, it was a Target Salvage, and they wanted $13 for it, because most games that end up as a Target Salvage at a Goodwill in my area tend to go for about 50% of retail. This was originally a $25 game, and it's the introductory version of the Evolution series, which goes for quite a bit more money. My favorite part has to be the creatures you have on the token bags, from the chubby guy to the predator, long neck. My girlfriend likes the little uh, kangaroo mouse guy, whereas I like the tusked ferrets, with a bit of a clownfish motif going on here. But basically, during the course of this game, you take the role of 
several colonies of species. Oops, that's my price list. I don't. I hope I didn't show that. Well, too much anyway. There's spoilers there. But during the course of this game, you take on the role of several different species vying for food. And while very little food pops up in the general common pool, you can gain different traits such as predator or long neck to get additional food, defensive uh, blah, blah, defensive traits, that's the word I'm looking for, complete brain lock there, that you can use to defend yourself from predators where uh, the predator either has to also adapt in that manner or even the predator can still attack you but they're going to lose some of their population. Fun game, I definitely suggest it, especially if you can find it for $3 versus the original $25. And while the cat sniffs the box, I am going to transition to the next game. Another game to get the kitty sniff of approval is Koo. This is one of the games that I've actually wanted in my collection for a long time now. It cost me, well, $2. Admittedly, it's not the most expensive game on this list at only $11 right now that you can catch it on sales, but it is a 7.1 on Board Game Geek with a whopping 22,000 reviews. It's a popular game. A lot of people enjoy it. Best part, if I can shake it open, is that it is 100% complete and came with these weird little things. These modular plastic doodads, which I'm starting to think may have actually come from another board game. So if any of you recognize these, let me know in the comments down below what the heck I have. But basically, let me flip the box over because I'm not super familiar with the game. I haven't played it before and I haven't seen somebody play it in ages. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. Oh, oh, that, that hurts. That hurts. I'm just going to fix the previous owner's little flip-flop. There we go. A little bit of a pet peeve of mine is misplaced box lids. So basically it is a little bit of a bluffing deduction game and it actually has uh, reviews from Will Wheaton, Dice Tower, and Kotaku. Interesting. So yes, it's a little cyberpunk, little dystopian future and a little bit of deduction. I'll just put that up there. Feel free to pause and read at your leisure because I'm not going to read the whole thing on camera. There we go. On to the next game. Now this was a very interesting find. I found this at a thrift store I don't normally go to but my girlfriend had a gut feeling we would find something there and we did. This is Citadels from Fantasy Flight Games, one of the companies you need to be looking for when you're thrifting. It is a whopping 7.1. Okay, so I say whopping, it's actually the exact same score as the last game, 7.1 on Board Game Geek, with 39,000 reviews. Best part is that the original retail was about $25. Currently, even from the original manufacturer, goes between $31 to $40 online due to it being out of print. And while the price tag says it was $1.99, it was actually the color of the week, so I got it for a dollar. Still shrink-wrapped. I did good. Now, I left it in shrink because I already have a copy that I thrifted a while back for four. That one's not as impressive as one in shrink for one, so what you gonna do? The only downside is the box does have a bit of a dent here, so if I wanted to, I could remove this from the shrink wrap, box swap, and then put it back in my trade pile. But for now, I think it's going to stay in shrink. I have actually played this, though it has been a bit, but it's a little bit of a drafting mechanic game and has some slight feel of deck building. But, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really am having a bit of a brain fart today. don't want to read the whole box on camera. Fortunately, I do know the other two remaining games much better, so I'm going to jump over to those. After looking back over the last box, I pretty much hit all of the bases. Your 
building up a kingdom, you're selecting a role at sort of random using a card drafting mechanic, and you continue on from there. This, however, is probably the most expensive game that I'm going to be showing you this evening. Once again, it's got the lovely matte finish with the texture and everything. This is Kingdom Builder. I cannot believe I found this. Yeah, it's got masking tape on it, but it is complete. It's actually baggied up and everything, and the cat is using it as a pillow right now. $3. Originally, $60. Currently, you can find it for about $50 or less. Actually, no, the lowest I saw was $48 and change, and that's if you catch it on sale. So... Not bad for $3, and we got a kitty belly, gotta rub it. In this, you are building a kingdom, the board is randomly generated, everything you choose is randomly generated, and you're basically stuck with rules on the cards you draw, selecting where you have to play. It's all about gaining territory in the most convoluted way possible, in my opinion. Let's just flip her over. Oh. Oh, that hurts. And if you look at where we cut the tape, I completely forgot that the previous owner not only didn't get it lined up, but they got it lined up at an angle. I hate square game boxes, just gonna put that out there. I will not make you suffer through me reseeding this, but yeah. It is a 7.0, so okay, I should have actually put it before the 7.1s, but I had to move it behind those just due to how valuable or well, expensive it is. And it's a 7.0 out of 14,000 reviews, so it's got to be doing something right. Oh. Queen Games, I've noticed, is another publisher to add to your mental library when it comes to what to look for while thrifting. I found a few of their items, and maybe I'll show the others in the future. But it's just immaculate in here. Oh, also, the score track is the back of your game board. It really is randomly generated. Everything was so well taken care of, it's lovely. I like it when people take care of their games. Completely goes against the common tropes as to what you're going to find at a thrift store. If I'm not mistaken, this is going to be... Yes! Aha! I got it. But the fact that I find so many games in shrink, factory sealed inside if they're not in shrink, or in this case, boxed and well maintained, that just flies in the face of the common logic when it comes to what you're going to find, board game thrifting. Now I've got one more game, and admittedly it is yet another repeat. It has actually shown up in this series before, but you'll understand when you see it. It's Pandemic. This is a 7.7 .7 on Board Game Geek out of 65,000 reviews. And I've played it many a time. It is a really good game. Sadly, it is just the base game. Originally, it goes for about 40 bucks. Most of the time you're gonna catch it on 40 bucks, but if you are lucky enough to find it on sale, you can get it down to around 20. Or in my case, oh come on. Dramatic reveal ruined. Two dollars. This is the cheapest copy of Pandemic I own. I have several more that I have in my trade pile, and this is joining them. The only downside is there is a little bit of box damage there. I may do a box swap for when I finally take this baby to one of the local board gaming options. Auctions. I cannot speak today for the life of me. I might be a wee bit too energetic. Blame the cat. He had me chase him around the house, otherwise he wouldn't settle down. Best part about this, why I would be doing a box swap, is because it's in shrink, factory sealed inside, everything is perfect, everything is ready for the next owner. So it's either going to be in my trade pile or more likely my auction pile because I have more copies of this than uh, you want to know about. It also makes for great gifts for budding gamers, and the camera is now doing a bouncy bounce because the cat decided to walk around my stand. There we go. But that's all I have for you this evening. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. If you dislike this video or feel I could have done something better, go ahead and leave a dislike. I don't mind. 
If you have any suggestions for other games I should keep my eyes open for while thrifting, or you just want to say hello, leave a comment, I try to get back to everybody. If you want to see more videos like this, I'll have a playlist of board game thrifts pop up right about now. If you are new to my channel and want to see more board game thrifts, tech thrifts, DIY projects, weird food reviews, and cheap tech reviews, I know I've got a lot going on, feel free to subscribe. And of course, until next time, this is your guy, Cly, signing off.